All right, folks, I'm super excited to be here with the chief engineer of the new Lexus GX550. I'm wearing a kind of cowboy hat today, but um, I'm going to be asking some questions to see what we can learn about uh, the meaning and the purpose of this GX550. Uh, we have Koji Tsukasaki-san, uh, chief engineer for GX550, so let's go and find out what's going on. Okay, welcome back. So I'm going to ask a bunch of questions in English. He's going to respond in Japanese, and then I'll try to reply back in English to you guys as well. So first, we want to ask a little bit more about the development of the GX in terms of how this developed in conjunction with other TNGF platform vehicles because the um, GX shares this platform with many other vehicles in the past. Let me ask about that first. All right, so that was a bit of a long explanation, but um, the most important things to keep in mind is that Koji-san was in charge of the entire TNGF platform vehicles, which can include everything from the lighter, smaller Tacoma all the way to larger Sequoia. And as you can imagine, trying to develop a platform that works with all the models would be very difficult to do. But they wanted to make sure that it has been standardized in terms of design and the basic architecture and the basic philosophy of the body and the frame so that they can reduce the cost, reduce the development time, and also make it easier to manufacture in different parts of the world. And so that was a big challenge for Koji-san to develop a um, consistent approach for all of the models involved but the main difference is that um, because of the size difference among the models, obviously the frame itself has to be longer or shorter or where the cab is mounted in the back, the mounting points will be different and some of the reinforcements will have a different uh, size or strength based on the size of the vehicle itself. So those things have to change, but the width of the actual frame is the same for all the models which makes it easier to standardize the components, standardize the engineering methods, and also to manufacture the frame, uh, as well as many of the components attached to the frame uh, are also the same among all the models, which is quite shocking because we are talking about Tacoma, and then we have the Tundra, we have the uh, Sequoia, we have the Land Cruiser 300 series, the 250 series, the Lexus GX, the Lexus LX, those are all using the same TNGF platform. And so that kind of answers your question as to how is it possible to have so many different models of different sizes and still use a standardized and a common platform uh, because the engineering principle and design are the same for all of them. So I also asked about uh, some of the challenges during the development stage in designing the GX along with some of the other uh, GA platform vehicles. And the interesting thing is that the design and the styling have to be different for all the different models, but the basic architecture is same or similar for uh, all these models that are being produced. So he said the challenge is how do you make each of the models unique with uh, its own character and design, but at the same time, engineering-wise, they share the platform or they share the similar attributes. And those are some of the difficult things. He also said the crash testing requirements are different for different parts of the world. So he has to be able to not only meet the styling need and styling uh, wishes, but also be able to meet the crash testing requirement for different countries while still standardizing the components underneath the vehicle. So that makes it very difficult. So next I asked about the engine because this 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 engine is shared among many models uh, along the likes of the Lexus LX and also Tundra, Sequoia and so forth. Uh, but primarily I was interested in asking about the difference between this and the Lexus LX, with which it shares many of its components. So he said the basic engine is the same. The power output is a little bit less than the LX uh, because they actually have a different turbochargers on the GX. It's a smaller turbochargers, which will spool up faster and spin faster as well. And therefore you can get a faster response when you step on the gas, which is more ideal for off-roading, for example. And so he said that, that they made that change. The power is a little bit down compared to LX. I think it's 349 horsepower. But the torque rating is exactly the same as LX. Uh, and also when the actual uh, peak torque and peak horsepower occurs, it might be a little bit different in terms of RPM. But the primary thing is by making the turbocharger smaller, it's a bit more responsive. Now I asked about the steering feel because we're moving from hydraulic power steering to electric power steering, which is EPS. On all the new models, uh, it was rare to have hydraulic power steering these days anyway. And my question is, hey, we, we're going to lose some of the sensation and feedback that is so much part of a hydraulic steering. Uh, and he said, actually, yes, you do get more feedback with the hydraulics system, 
but also it's a little bit more tiring over longer uh, drives because you have to hang on to the steering a little bit more. It's heavier. It's a bit more awkward, uh, again, if you're driving for long haul. So he said that EPS has advantage in that it is a little bit lighter, but also more comfortable, easier to hold, uh, and easier to drive for long term. So comfort was primary focus, uh, and that is one advantage of EPS. And then I asked about what is the difference in terms of feel for electric power steering among all these different models. For example, I noticed the Tundra steering is a little bit heavier than Lexus LX, even though the system is basically the same. And he said that's to do with a couple of things. One is that the actual hardware itself is a bit different because the axle and the design of the uh, platform is a little bit different, uh, but also you can tune the feel based on software. And that's really based on Takumi, who are specialists, and they will determine what is the right feel for that model. So it can't always be explained by science, but he said the Takumi people have the right feel and they can figure out what is the right thing for the type of customers that the cars are intended for. The last question I had is what uh, Kojisa feels is the most uh, proud moment in terms of designing this Lexus GX and uh, where he felt he had spent the most amount of his energy and time and passion. And he said that a number of different things. Because the GX is designed to be more of an off-road vehicle now than ever, there's a lot of focus on making sure that this vehicle is drivable and enjoyable as an off-road vehicle as much as it is an on-road vehicle. So for example, we have the, uh, the hood design here with an angular um, cut, I guess, of the corners here. And that allows the drivers to see this part from the driver's side and then the overhang is much smaller than, let's say, in the previous GX. So he or she is able to determine where the edge of the um, bumper is based on looking at this section because the hood is raised here, making it easier to determine how far you are from the object. Uh, and that gives you a bit of a confidence feel also uh, in terms of design. And, and mainly because the overhang is pretty small compared to where we are in front of the, the hires. So this overhang is very small, even smaller underneath here on the overtrail model, but even on this luxury trim, uh, this whole thing is designed to provide a more suitable uh, vehicle for off-roading. And this is called an integrated spindle design. Now it's, it's actually functional because we have a, uh, this part is the actual radiator intake for the turbocharger on both sides. And so you can actually intake the air in uh, but it's also functional with the airflow here as well. So the spindle grill isn't just for grill design, but it's also actually practical and functional at the same time. And, and these pieces here are also designed to uh, make sure that you can uh, accommodate off-roading to make sure these parts are actually quite guarded from potential damage. And in the case of overchill, this piece here, which is higher to give you a better approach angle, you can even replace that if you damage it separately from the rest. So to make it easier and more cost effective to fix any parts that might get damaged. He also said the headlight is higher than what might be in a typical SUV so that if you hit trees or bushes or branches, once again, there's less chance of damage in the headlights. So the entire vehicle has truly been designed to integrate the thinking of what off-road vehicle should do. And that's what he's really proud of with the whole design field and so forth. And I think personally, from my perspective, the fact that he was in charge of the entire TNGAF platform, which consists of many, many models, that's what makes it special because he looked after everything. And then in particular, the GX as a chief engineer. And I think that's what makes the GX very special. So I hope you enjoyed our video. We want to thank uh, Koji-san as a chief engineer. Thank you so thank much you for all much. your help and for a great design. I can't wait to tell you more about the GX and that is coming soon to you. Anyway, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.